It is great to be back for, what are we on now? I think we're on session eight, I believe. So uh, good to be back with everyone this week. And we're going to talk about yet another item that uh, can really, I think, take your apps to the next level with, in this case, communication. And that is sending email and SMS messages. So a real quick uh, recap for you. I'm going to run through the demo again. Those that are here every time you've seen this and you're probably like, okay, Dan, I get it. But for those that might not have made it every time, uh, I'll run through kind of what we're after here in just a moment. So let me go ahead and uh, move on. And what we've covered up to this point in our now eighth session is we started with AI and that was Azure OpenAI. We talked about how you can bring your own data and chat against that. And all of this is part of a uh, tutorial that we'll have a link to at the end of this. So although I'm only going to have about you know 15 or so minutes to actually go through this with you, there is a full on tutorial that you can all go through uh, that will walk you through step by step. Now, this time, though, we have already covered a little bit on Azure communication services and how to set that up in the Azure portal. Very simple to set up. Uh, I'll go back there in just a moment. And then last time I actually made a phone call kind of live from an app um, you know, to my phone, if you can see that on the, the camera here. And uh, that was a nice feature if you need phone calling. But the next kind of level of that is, yeah, you know, these days, especially my boys, you know, it's like, don't call dad, just send me a text. Um, it's kind of a sad state, I suppose, but it's reality that we do send a lot of uh, SMS. So we're gonna talk about how you could do that from a custom app. And that's really, really what we're after. Now, kind of looking forward, next week, we're gonna start a whole new thing. We're gonna get into organizational data. And uh, what we're gonna talk about here is how you can actually use Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Graph Toolkit to bring in data as users interact, for instance, with a data grid. So we'll talk about that a little bit more starting next week. All right, so for today, this will be our last session on Azure Communication Services. And I wanna mention just a couple things. Um, I mentioned that you can do phone calling, you can send SMS messages, you can do email, but you can do more than that actually. Uh, you can set up full on call centers, literally with this technology and they have that available. But you can also do things like audio video calling from an app. You could add live chat capabilities, Pretty much if, if it's communication, this is gonna support it in general. So check out the docs. They actually have some really nice quick starts. I'm gonna show you one of those in just a moment here with SMS that'll really help you get started with this. So with that, let me go ahead and run back to our, our demo app. And again, some of you have seen this a bit, uh, others may not have, but let me just walk you through really quickly. So first off, here's where we are on the tutorial, on the sending email and SMS. Just to give you an idea, this is kind of what it will walk you through, and it'll walk you through step by step, have a lot of hints and tips along the way, so feel free to check that out. I'll give you a link at the end. Um, but what I wanted to show you first was when you go to the Azure portal, let me actually zoom that one just a bit more for you. Um, I've already created an Azure communication services resource, so you could literally type communication, and you'll see it right there. Super easy to set up, uh, I don't know, less than probably 60 seconds or something like that. Now, the next step to that though, is if you wanna do phone calling or if you wanna do SMS, then you need a phone number. And there's two types of phone numbers you could set up. You could set up local or you could set up toll free. And so if I hit get here, you can walk through a little wizard. Let me just pick uh, what I would do. Let it load here. All right, and then what are we doing? Is it an application making the calls or a person? Because it does depend uh, on the SMS or the phone calls. Now, I'm gonna say an application in this case. And like I said, you can actually pick, do you want just a local number? Is it for local businesses, for example? Or is it something that you want that toll-free number uh, to do? So we can actually do that. Now, on the calling, we could say, yeah, I wanna receive calls, but you could also uh, make calls, which is what I showed last week. In this case, though, what I wanna show you is right here, send and receive SMS. Now, the demo I'm gonna show you in just a moment, it only sends, okay? It's it's kinda like you could send out, hey, your appointment is at you know 1 p.m. Uh, today. Uh, in fact, 
pretty much, I'd say every doctor or dentist I go to lately, you know, they send those reminder SMS messages. Well, this is a perfect technology for that. Um, maybe you just want to send though, and that's it. Now, what I wanted to mention, I'm only going to show the send part of it. But if you want to receive, um, what this does is it uses Azure Event Grid. And with Event Grid, as a notification comes in that, hey, you received a message, that can actually be hooked to an Azure function. And let me just show you that really quickly. There's a uh, tutorial in the quick starts on sending an SMS message. Now, I'm going to talk through that. But I also wanted to show you that there's a receive and reply. So you literally could now integrate some AI into this possibly to get a message, figure, it, figure out what they're talking about, get that data, and then send a response. So there's a lot of automation that can be done here. And another thing just to kind of throw out there is WhatsApp support. So that's even another option that you can do. But uh, for now, I just wanted to point out that what this does, if we come on down, is this uses uh, an event grid trigger with Azure Functions. So that again, when an SMS message comes in from like a customer, you could be notified, your Azure function you would write, and they show an example right here. Uh, that function would be called, and then you can get who's it to, who's it from, and what's the message. And now you can act upon that and do something. Now, again, the demo I'm gonna do in just a moment here, it's just gonna send, but just keep in mind you can do both, which is super cool. Now, in addition to that, you can also come in and um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I already, I already have one set up, but you could set up an email domain and it could either be a custom uh, email domain or you can have an Azure generated one that you can just use. Now, most of us, if it's a business, are obviously going to go with a custom domain, but if you just want to try this out, you can actually uh, come to connect domain follow the wizard, or you can do the following if you want to set up email. Instead of typing communication uh, services, type email communication services right there. And then you could walk through setting up your own email resource that you can then send emails through. Um, now, I'm not going to have time to walk through that, but the tutorial does. So if you're interested, it'll show you how to get started. Now, all of that to show you the following and for some reason, my bar is being blocked here. So uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna drag this guy over, move this back up, there we go. Um, so in the application, for those that haven't seen this, this demonstrates three things. It demonstrates AI, it demonstrates communication. So we have not only the phone calling, which you can do live phone calling, uh, but also email and SMS. So what I'm going to do here is this uses Azure OpenAI to generate some starter email or SMS messages for customers. And if you're interested and missed that, not only will the uh, tutorial walk you through how to set that up and how it's in the app, uh, but there's also recordings of the community calls we had that will walk you through that as well. Um, like I said, we're on session eight. So, so let's go ahead and just kind of type what they have here. Order is delayed, you know, two days or something like that. And I want to help my customer service or whoever it is generate a subject, uh, a body, and then also an SMS message. Now you'll notice this one's you know quite a bit smaller, but what this will use now is if I hit send email, this will send an email to the customer, and it would use this body. We could edit it, but what I want to focus on is more on the SMS part. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send here, and it just sent it. We'll talk about why that was so fast, by the way. And give it a second, and uh, you may or may not be able to see it on my camera, but there we go, it just came in. So I doubt you'll be able to see this too well, but there's a little SMS message there um, from my toll-free number, and it says exactly what's on the screen here. It says, hi, Jane, your order's delayed. We apologize for any inconvenience, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's kind of what we're talking about is what if you want to integrate that type of functionality into your app? And keep in mind, you could even have them respond to that potentially. Um, you've all probably seen with like uh, doctors, for example, physicians. Uh, when I get mine, typically it'll be like, you know, one for confirm you can make the appointment, uh, two if you want to cancel or some other scenario like that. Well, you could actually build that in as well to automate 
uh, that process with Azure Communication Services. All right. So now that we've seen that, let's spend the remaining about five minutes or so um, kind of walking through. So what's going on here? Well, in the app, um, there's a client side part of this and there's a server side. Now, the server side is actually handling the SMS and the email, and I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. But I do want to remind everyone that was here last week, the phone calling, well, that has to go in the browser, of course, because you need access to the audio device of the browser. But with the SMS and the email, um, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to be using the connection string from Azure Communication Services. So let me show you that real quick. If I go back into my resource, and this is my ACS resource, this one does not have the phone number, but I have another one that does. If I come down to keys, just like any Azure service pretty much, you'll see this connection string. And there's a couple ways you can do this. In this case, I'm using the connection string. Um, there's even other ways where you could set up a managed identity and do it that way, but for now we'll go with the connection string. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing that connection string right here from an environment file. Now you might stick that in Azure Key Vault and pull it from there. In this case, I'm assuming that the server where this is running actually has an environment variable already loaded and I'm just gonna pull from that. So it just depends on how your company likes to do it. But what I wanna call your attention to is up top here. So notice that we have an Azure communication identity we talked about this a little last week for those that were here, but I'll review it again. And then we have this Azure communication email and Azure communication SMS. Now these are these two right here are gonna be the clients that would allow you to either send the email or send the SMS message. And you're gonna see it's like really simple uh, to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I can't just send an SMS message with a phone number. I mean, that wouldn't be very secure. So I need to get a token and a user identity. You'll see that code right here. So notice we're gonna create this communication identity client, feed it a connection string, create a user, get a token and do it that way. Now that's used actually for the phone calling, okay? Because I can't pass the connection string, well, I could, but I don't wanna pass the connection string down to the browser because that would be very insecure, right? So this is used as an API that the phone calling part could call, and then we get that token in the user identity, and then it can make the call, okay? But for the email, look what we're doing. We're creating a new email client, and then we're just feeding it the connection string directly because this is a server-side API. Now, what we're gonna do here is what you would expect with an email. Like, if you're gonna send an email, what do you gotta do, folks? Well, you're gonna have probably the sender address, okay? In this case, I have it in a environment file because it's a demo, but this would probably be dynamic. You're gonna send the uh, subject and what is the type? Is it plain text? Is it HTML? Those type of things. And then who is it going to? Well, the two takes an array. And of course, you could have multiple recipients and you could do BCC and CC and all that fun stuff too. So this is pretty much analogous, I'm gonna argue, to any email thing you've ever tried to do. You know, you're gonna have the sender, you're gonna have the subject, you're gonna have the body, and then you're gonna send it. Now, what we're gonna do then is just say, begin send. Now, why begin send? And why you see the await here, and you might notice an async up on the function. Well, this of course is an async process. You know, we don't wanna lock up the API while it sends because it possibly could be sending to a lot of people. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Now, I did a little little hack here. Remember earlier when I ran it, I said, wow, that returned really fast. Well, that's because I did a little hack. Um, normally, you'll wait for it to return because you might want the sender ID. It actually gives you a unique identifier for that send. You might then log that, uh, put it in a database, something like that, so that you can actually uh, troubleshoot if you need to. Now, what I did is I just returned kind of an instant after 500 millisecond response, and I hard-coded the ID, but if you wanted to wait and get it, you would just comment this out, comment this in, and it would just add a few more seconds um, to it because it's gonna take a little time to finish the send and then get you back the ID. 
All right, so that's what it looks like to send an email. Now, in the last about two minutes I have here, let's talk about SMS. It's the same story. We're gonna create an SMS client, okay? And I wanna emphasize uh, that there are .NET clients and Python and JavaScript, and I think there's Java and others. So while this is TypeScript, you could pretty much choose your language to do this. So we feed it that connection string again, and then we call send, in this case, um, and notice from, okay, so this is the ACS phone number. I'm pulling that from an environment file I have down here. And then my two phone number, this is actually hard coded to be me because you know it's a demo folks. So I'm sending that to me. And then this is the message that Azure OpenAI generated, put into the web page. And then uh, that was sent to the server side. Of course, the user could have edited the message and then we send it off and, and that's it. It's literally like right there to send an SMS message. Now, the last thing I do want to mention with this is starting early November, phone numbers, and this, this is a good thing, I think. Um, phone numbers need to be verified. What do I mean by that? Well, if you come on down, you're going to see this regulatory documents. And this is something that you can create a new application and basically your company would submit that, hey, we are the ones that are gonna be sending the SMS messages. Uh, here's why we're doing it. And obviously it's an effort to cut back on all the spammed you know, SMS message. We don't want anybody just sending SMS. So just as a heads up, if you're already using this, kind of be aware that you wanna submit your regulatory document. And if you're not using it, uh, starting early November, they're going to require that you validate the phone number, basically that you associate it with a, a person or company who has been validated. So keep that in mind. So I hope that gives everybody an idea about what's possible with uh, ACS. And if you want to get more information, again, that was this step right there to the left. Uh, you can, uh, well, you can scan that code, but scan this code right here, or you could just go to this AKA MS link right here. Now, in the last thing before I wrap up here, I wanna mention, um, if you go to this link below, aka.ms, I'll put this in the chat. This is a little bonus thing for you. We have a, uh, a Copilot Adventures coming up. Now, this will be GitHub Copilot, but it's, it's coding puzzles that you're gonna solve with GitHub Copilot. So if you're interested and you do Visual Studio, we're gonna have a stream for that. If you do VS Code, we're gonna have a stream for that. So feel free to uh, check out the repo and you'll see a link where you can register. So with that, let me turn it back over because I'm like a minute over. Sorry, Fabian. I'll give you back the time though.